Well, joining me now is a cannabis legal expert, Kendra Stanion. Thanks for uh, coming in today. Thank you. And uh, a lot of your clients you represent are uh, dispensary owners. So yes. you have a, a lot of um, law practice in this. Let's start with just some of the basic changes that have happened today. Because the, the rules around uh, cannabis, many people think, okay, with legalization, they're probably a lot looser, but that's not the case. No, it's not. And in fact, for the average consumer, something that's new as of today is we can expect that there'll be greater enforcement of people who possess illegal cannabis, mm -hmm. which in Toronto right now is anything. So anyone with uh, who's at Trinity right now with Shauna um, and who's smoking is not smoking legal weed. Unless they have a medical prescription and they're mm -hmm. smoking something they've previously purchased online from a licensed producer, then otherwise they are in possession of illicit cannabis right now. Right, okay. And what kind of penalties? Are they stiffer now compared to uh, before? Uh, we might expect that someone who is in possession of a small amount of illicit mm -hmm. cannabis would face more of a regulatory fine, though jail is possible for that offense. It is, okay. You know, we uh, heard from the police chief earlier in the show uh, about cracking down on illegal dispensaries. You have a lot of history in this, and uh, in fact, you're still representing clients who were um, yes. issued, um, I guess, arrested uh, during some crackdowns in Toronto. Some of your cases are still going through the courts from two years ago, Project mm -hmm. Claudia. That's correct, from the very first arrest day. Um, so uh, what, what did we see with those results? Because we saw a lot of charges dropped. Is that going to be the case going forward too, do you think? No, I don't think it will be. And I think that uh, the province issued a warning, essentially, that dispensaries that are continuing to operate as of today are going to not only face a lifetime ban from getting a legal license, mm -hmm. which is theoretically what dispensary owners would want to do, is to roll into the legal system, mm -hmm. but there are also much, much larger monetary fines and potential jail time that they face under the Cannabis Act. We're seeing a lot of uh, dispensaries, though, in this city continuing to operate, and they're, uh, they're wanting to do it. Um, and I guess, are they willing to face the penalties? What are you hearing from... Uh I, yeah, I, I think it's a bold move, possibly an uninformed one. But mm -hmm. on the flip side, uh, unfortunately, Ontario has been so slow in switching from the original plan to a privatization model, which I think many people support. But the reality is if you are a dispensary owner who wants to become a legal dispensary, these applications aren't going to exist until December. And we've been told that stores won't exist until April. So, And we've also been told that you will have to have a lease in place already with the building in order to even apply. That makes it pretty cost prohibitive for a current dispensary owner to be able to shutter, somehow maintain the cost of their lease for upwards of six months before they could begin selling again. Right. Um, so are we, uh, are you expecting that, uh, I mean, the, the police chief said they're going to crack down. More people are going to be arrested. Is there a defense to make for these people? Uh, yeah. There's always a defense. I know we that. Will, we but, will figure out a defense, yes, I'm sure, right. on our end. But, uh, but initially, no. I mean, the warning was clear, mm -hmm. and it's been everyone's known for years that the operation of dispensaries is illegal. Now that we have an idea of what the legal regime is, I think there's less and less excuse mm -hmm. as to why you'd be operating. Okay. Um, some of the possible resolutions that are uh, coming out of the cases that are still currently going through the courts, I know a lot of the owners are still uh, in courts right now. Um, can you talk about uh, what some of the possible outcomes could be there? Yeah, I think one of the concerns for owners uh, and individuals that are still facing charges is they want to be able to roll into this new legal regime. And now that we have the details of it, we know that uh, certain CDSA drug offenses, uh, past convictions will not be a bar, but certain convictions will be. So simple possession is, is fine and certain criminal code convictions are fine, but everyone has to, has to pass a security check and a security clearance right. that wants to be part of a license. And so owners are looking and saying, well, if I plead personally to a certain drug offense, for example, possession for the purpose of trafficking or production of marijuana, that will bar me or likely bar me from being able to get a license. Okay, well, uh, we'll keep in touch with you over the next few Thank weeks you. and see what happens. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thank you.